and here we go with another Alabama adventure. Now tonight, it will be, once again, it will be a little something different. Uh, in some of the videos I've done, I have I told you a little bit of Alabama history and uh, that type of stuff. And uh, it was on a TV show a while back. I mentioned it in an earlier video, the front porch out of Alexander City with a good friend of mine, Kenny Dean. And he asked me while I was down there that day, he said that he enjoyed the videos I did. And they, he and the producer down there said that they really enjoyed some of the history that I had told about here in Alabama. And uh, what did I think about doing just some videos just showing some Alabama history? Well, I was kind of all for it at the time because I always enjoyed history. I was not a very good history student whenever we were in school. Uh, as I said in a previous video also, we always studied some kind of history about something I didn't care nothing about, about something overseas or in some foreign country. I could care less what goes on over there. And that's the problem, I believe, in my opinion, with a lot of the world. Uh, too many people sticking their nose in other people's business, trying to tell them what to do and what not to do. And if, if you would just, as one of old Hank Williams' old songs, if you just mind your own business, the world might be a whole lot better place to live in. Uh, I know I did that Hank video just a while back, and uh, I have had some good comments on that. I've also had some of you out there in YouTube to say that you enjoyed the history here in Alabama that I did. I'm going to try not to get on my political views this afternoon. But anyway, I, that's what we're going to do in this particular video. We're going to take a little trip down to Tallapoose County. We're going to go through two or three or four little towns down there. We're going to stop along the way and I'm going to tell you some things about it. The way we got this uh, trip up, I found out that there was a, a hat company in uh, uh, Notasauga, Alabama. And it's one of the few uh, American companies that are still left in this country after uh, the Clintons got through with sending everything to China. Which I know China does such great work over there. That's why you can't buy a shirt or anything else that fits anymore. Uh, all the uh, clothing industry has gone to China. But there is a very good hat company in uh, Notasauga. And that's what we were going down there for that day. And when we decided to go down there, that's what else we decided to do. We just as we went through this little town and that little town, we just tell you something about it to give you a little bit of Alabama history. Then after we started on the video and we got pretty a good bit of it uh, pretty much uh, completed, I began to wonder, well, will these videos be left on YouTube or will somebody shut my channel down now that we're doing history? Because there is a small group of people in this country now that wants to do away with all the history here. And uh, where have we seen this before? I can remember watching the news a few years back uh, over in, uh, and they were showing Afghanistan, which is a country I could care less about what happened to it. If it blew up and burned up right now, it wouldn't bother me as long as didn't any uh, uh, Americans over there get to hurt or anything. And then there's some Americans that need to be uh, blown up and burned up. But anyway, that's just my opinion. And that's something else. Uh, your, your, your freedom of speech is already gone in this country. And it's not going to be long until your opinion, you're going to be told what you can think and what you can't, just like this history. That's what people are wanting to do away with now. But let's get back to Afghanistan. I remember watching on the news whenever the Taliban, and you know, if I had a terrorist organization and I was going to name it something, I sure wouldn't name it Taliban. That, that sounds like something in your stomach that needs to be removed. But anyway, uh, to me. But anyway, I can remember watching on TV that the Taliban was blowing up all these antiquities or whatever you call them over there, all these old, all this old artwork and uh, a lot of history of the country over there. And uh, I didn't particularly like that at the time. And that's what I was thinking. Somebody needs to blow them up. But uh, why would you want to uh, uh, des destroy that type of stuff that is the history of a country or of a nation? And it's the same way over here. Yeah, there's a lot of things that went on in this country that, that wasn't right, that, that I don't like, that a lot of people don't like. But I heard somebody say one time whenever I, we were talking about something and I, and I said, I don't particularly like this and I don't particularly like that. And this person didn't say it in these exact words. They said it in a little harsher language. They said, there's a heck of a lot of things that go on that I don't like, but I just have to put up with it. And that's pretty much the way things should be with history. A lot of, uh, the thing about history is if you don't learn from history, you're condemned to repeat it. And I know you have heard that somewhere before. I've heard it many times. And that's true. Uh, what about uh, whenever we start doing away with uh, all our freedoms, like our freedom of speech, that's already been done away with. What are we going to do next, like the Nazis and go to burning books? And uh, who's going to decide which book we burn and uh, whatever? 
a book that we uh, decide to keep. But I'm getting off on my political views, and uh, I guess I just need, I wouldn't put it on video, because I know uh, there would be people that would probably quit watching what I do, but uh, my religious and political views. But anyway, we'll just uh, save that for some other video somewhere on down the line. So, but anyway, I hope you have a good time today as we travel down to Tallapoosa County. We're going to go by, we're going to go by Blue Creek. I'm going to finally show you Blue Creek. We're going to go by uh, Real Town. Uh, we're going to go into uh, uh, Notasauga, which is where our destination was that day. And there's some history in uh, Notasauga that I'm going to tell you about. And does it need to be done away with? If we're going to do away with some history, let's just do away with it all. All right, you're looking at the water tower that's in Dadeville. Today on this Alabama adventure, we're going to take a trip. We want y'all to come along with us. Yeah, let me get a picture of this old bank. Uh, let me kind of show you a little bit of Dadeville while we're here. We're on Highway 49 here in Alabama, and there goes a, a burgundy Ford truck. In case you want to buy one, you'll probably find them at the Ford place. Anyway, we're headed down Highway 49. And what we're going to be doing, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the places as we go through. Right now, you've heard me talk about Blue Creek in the past. Big dance hall, big party place that I used to enjoy. Next stop, Blue Creek. All righty, now we're coming on down. I mean, I hope I got that camera off of me far enough to where you can see me. I won't be looking at my nose. But anyway, we're coming on down Highway 49. Just sort of let you know where we're at. This is uh, a still water that's on uh, Lake Martin. It's a uh, golf course, and there's some very nice houses back in there. But I just wanted to kind of let you know where we were. All right, here we are coming down the road. I'm just going to video through the window. We're coming up on Blue Creek. And... Uh, I thought I'd let you see what it looks like down through here now. When I used to come down here, there wasn't all of these uh, restaurants and hotels and that type of stuff, uh, condos. Maybe this is picking up pretty good. All right, as we come across this little bridge with the guardrails, this was Blue Creek, and if you look right behind this, uh, let me see where I get a good shot at it. Behind this big building, right out there was where the old dance hall was, and I've spent a many a night partying right there on that little piece of land, as has most people down here in uh, Tallapoosa County. Anyway, they have a lot of uh, boat sales and boat rentals down here now, and uh, a restaurant or two, as you'll see right there, it says Eat Here. And that's all they want you to do. They don't want you to come do anything else. They just want you to come to eat right there. All right, now let me tell you where we're at now. We're at Walnut Hill. And uh, if you remember, I've mentioned Walnut Hill and a, a friend that works right over there. That's Walnut Hill Eagle Station. And I don't see her car out there today. She may have traded cars. It's been years since I've seen her. But anyway, where are we headed now? We're headed on down 49 on one of Alabama's backcountry roads. I guess we could name that series this. We're going to do a little history. We're going to do a little travel. We're going to have a good time this afternoon. And uh, now we're headed to Real Town. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Real Town when we get there. All right, we're getting pretty close on into uh, Real Town. And there's a little church as you go by. Our big church, I guess. And let me just hold the camera out here on the road a minute as we come into the big town of Real Town. All right, now right back up the road there is uh, Real Town. Uh, and anyway, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little something about Real Town real quick. We get the camera turned back around here, and as you can see over here behind me, they actually have a historical marker down here. Let's see what it is. <clears throat> this is the uh, site of the Thaddeus Post Office. On June 20, 1880, David M. Key Postmaster General of the United States of America appointed, appointed Thaddeus T. Webster as Postmaster at Thaddeus, now Realtown, Alabama, which he held in honor 
ability and uh, integrity until his death in 1889. His family continued carrying the uh, mail to the rule free delivery came into existence. Marker was erected in 1975 by Hugh T. Webster, son of Thaddeus Webster. All right, so now you know kind of what uh, Real Town is uh, famous for. One other thing that Real Town is famous for is it has the only kiwi farm in Alabama, and I don't know if that's the birds or the fruit. But anyway, we're going to move on a little bit further as we head on to Nottasauga, Alabama. All right, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself right here. Right out there at that intersection is uh, Highway 49, and now we've turned on to uh, Highway 120 here in uh, Real Town, Alabama. And let me get you a quick shot of the Real Town High School. Real Town is uh, real well known for their football teams. They've won the state championship here in Alabama several times. So uh, uh, Real Town is a uh, very uh, important town when it comes to football here in Alabama. Anyway, let's get on to uh, Notasauga, Alabama. All right, we've come right on down uh, 120 just a little ways, and I want to give you a little bit of... I'm going to get you run over, I guess, out here be the next thing. But anyway, I'm going to give you a little bit of shot of the scenery. And right here, I believe, is the Kiwi Farm, the only Kiwi Farm in the state of Alabama. Let me walk right around over here, and i get you a shot of this nice uh, lake and barn. And uh, anyway, you might want to come to Real Town to check out the Kiwi Farm. I guess it's the Kiwi Fruit rather than the Kiwi Bird. Or, I don't know, the birds may hatch out of the fruit. I don't, I don't know nothing about kiwis. But I'm just going to give you a little quick shot of the scenery around here while we're headed on to Nottasauga, Alabama. And we've uh, got some interesting things we want to talk about when we get down there. Don't know exactly what that building is. That may be where planes land and uh, use for a hangar to carry kiwis all over the world. I don't know. All right, now we're coming up on the junction of uh, Highway 14 and uh, we're gonna turn back to the left as we head on to Notasauga, as you see right there on that sign. This little community is called Liberty City. And they have an Eagle Station down here. There we go. We're going into Macon County. And we are entering Macon County. Yeah. Still have some nice scenery down here though. And somebody's been cutting hay. If you like pecans, you can buy them down here. Alrighty, well we came right on up the road here just a little ways and I want to stop and tell you a little something about uh, Kiwis and uh, real town and that type of stuff. And uh, this was a pretty nice looking little place. It's uh, kind of some flat land here that's in Alabama. And if you remember, or you may have not ever heard it, uh, depending on where you are, but used to whenever Auburn football would come on, the guy that uh, opened the show and everything, he'd say, from the plains of Auburn. And uh, this is uh, pretty flat land out here. This is not real flat, but I have noticed some down here in uh, real town in this part of Alabama is where the uh, plain or whatever it's called here in Alabama is. But out here on this particular field, it looks like I've been cutting a little hay and they've been doing that back up around my neck of the woods in Alabama also this week. But anyway, I want to tell you a little something about kiwis. 
Okay, now before we go along any further in our journey this afternoon, I want to show you what a kiwi looks like. And this is a kiwi. It kind of looks like a lemon that's turned brown, but uh, it's a, a kiwi. Anyway, we're standing out here along uh, Alabama 14 and uh, headed on into Notasoga. Notasoga, I'll say it right in a minute, it's an Indian word. And sometimes it takes me a minute to get my tongue from around my IT so I can see what I'm saying. One other thing I want to tell you about these little kiwis, I was holding up in front of my face, so hopefully I can get it on camera, is uh, you can make a drink similar to uh, lemonade out of these things. What you do is uh, you get the juice, uh, the inside of the kiwi, just like you would a lemon, get the juice out of it, mix it with some sugar and the ice, of course. And it, They say it makes a pretty good little summertime drink. Might be a whole lot better if you splashed in a little rum or vodka one. But anyway, that's just something else I wanted to add about a kiwi. Now, you're probably thinking, well, when did they start raising kiwis in Alabama? Well, I don't really know. I'm just going to tell you a little story. Some of it may be true, some of it may not. But anyway, I'll tell you what he is. I'll, I'll just sort of make this up for the kids, I guess, or whatever. But as you've noticed, I have uh, put on my uh, Australian Outback sun hat. And you may say, well, why did you do that? Well, I do collect hats, and uh, this was one I found the other day, and uh, I like it pretty well. Uh, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to have to sit down. One of my uncles that I mentioned in one of these videos a while back, uh, Blake Gosden, I told you about uh, here a while back. He was cousin to uh, Vern Gosden, but he had a little sun-like hat that he wore for 100 years or more, and uh, I always liked that little hat. I'm going to sit down and try to draw it. And I may carry it to some hat company and see if we can't get some of these hats like I like made. They probably sell two or three million of them right quick. But uh, anyway, we'll do that a little bit later on. But let me tell you a little bit about kiwis. Kiwis, I believe, are supposed to come into this country from like uh, South America and Australia. That's why I got the Australian type uh, bush outback hat on. But anyway, uh, how did uh, they get kiwis over there in Australia and where did the name come from and that type of stuff? Well, way years ago, there was a man named Bork Dundee. And now, I don't know if he was kin to Crocodile Dundee, but he would wrestle alligator if you had one that needed wrestling. And he liked to catch kangaroos and sell them to zoos and uh, Hollywood and uh, restaurants and that type of stuff. So he got up one morning and he got in his boat and he said, I believe I'll just go to China. Ain't got nothing else to do today. It was pretty hot over there. He raised uh, sheep and uh, bumblebees. He was a big bumblebee farmer over in Australia. Anyway, he took off over to uh, China, and that's where he found these little fruits at over there, and he'd never seen a uh, kiwi before. It was called something else over there, but uh, some of the Chinese people, because he couldn't speak Chinese, wanted to have a little fun with him, and they told him that if you sit on one of these eggs, one of these, I can't think of the name of it, but if you sit on one of them long enough, that you would hatch a kiwi bird out of it. So that's why he decided to carry them back to Australia and uh, raise kiwi fruit kiwi birds of course uh the australian state bird or national bird is a kiwi i guess that's why they put it on shoe polish i don't i don't know but anyway that was how kiwis got brought back over to australia and whether this uh bork dundee was kin to crocodile dundee i don't know or superstar bill dundee that used to wrestle up in the memphis area i don't know but and i don't know if he was responsible for bringing kiwis to alabama uh, one of his brothers was responsible for something else that we won't talk about. But anyway, that's just a little bit of background on the Kiwis. Okay, so let's get back out on the road here on Highway 49. Headed, uh, but not, we're not on 49 anymore. We're on Highway 14. Excuse me. Let's get back on Highway 14 and head on into Notasoga. We've got a lot to talk about and a lot to see when we get there. I'm in my plaid shirt, my camouflage cap, and my sunglasses, so I'm in redneck mode today. 
But we're at, in Notasauga, Alabama is where this is. I'm going to give you a little look up over of the town. Here's where you are. we came into town and uh, anyway, we got this person that said they just had to get on video. They're just going to pull out in front of us. So I'll certainly put you on. And anyway, there they go. Nice seeing you. Come back to see us when you can, when you can't stay so long. Okay, here we go. We're going to show you a little bit of the town. This is uh, Notasauga. Notasauga's got a lot of history that I'm going to tell you about in just a few minutes. And uh, just ought to give you a little quick shot of the town. And uh, here's uh, some bargains down here. That's what we need. We need a good bargain. And I guess we're going to get run over. But uh, they even have a caution light, which is something you don't see a whole lot in town. I don't know exactly where City Hall is. Here's an old building right here you might want to look at. And uh, let me go right down here and I'll give you a little bit better shot of up this particular street in town. And uh, to just show you sort of what these old uh, Alabama country towns look like. This is uh, Town Hall right here. Very nice looking building, very new looking building. And uh, let's see, they'll be having the third annual 5K Cancer Walk, August 19th at 7 a.m. Registration forms inside and if you want to be a part of that, then you need to come down to Not Notasauga and uh, get in on that. A lot of people enjoy uh, walks like that. And there's a lot of traffic down here, but uh, I was told that this was the most traffic they'd had in town in uh, several years, but it was because we were here today. But anyway, just sort of give you a little shot of the place and one more shot of City Hall and the City Hall sign. Anyway, we're headed over to a hat company. Turner Hat Company is where we're going. That's what we came down here for. Like I said, there's some things that went on here in Notasauga many years ago that I'm going to talk to you about in just a few minutes in light of all of the uh, activity and things that are going on in our country right now. Alrighty, here we are at the United States Post Office in Notasauga, Alabama. And if you want to write somebody down here, it's 36866. One of the main reasons that I came to uh, Notasauga today was to give you a little bit of history on it, like we're trying to get started some of our videos doing. Notasauga has a good bit of history to tell you about. One thing is it does have a uh, large hat company here that's one of the uh, factories that's still left in this country where something of quality is still made in this country. Let me put it that way. Anyway, something else about uh, Notasauga is the population down here is about 950 people. Uh, it is in uh, Macon County, Alabama. And uh, let me see you right here real quick. One thing about Notasauga was J. Ed Livingston came from here or was born here or lived here, one or the other. He was the 23rd Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court. Also, uh, have something that has kind of been in the news a little bit lately, not something here in uh, Notasauga, but a lot of people are wanting to do away with dark moments in history in our country. And there's something here in Notasauga that, in my opinion, should be done away with also if you're going to start doing away with all the bad things that happened here. I don't know what exactly what the Tuskegee experiment was. I have heard what it was, but I'll let you look it up and find out for yourself. It was here in Notasauga at the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, as well as the Rosenwall School, where this uh, Tuskegee experiment was carried out. And it is undoubtedly a dark moment in the history of this country. So if we're going to do away with part of it, let's do away with it all. And this church and this school, I guess, should be torn down as well. I know that's very controversial, but whenever you do one thing for one person, you need to do it for everybody. That's what made America, America. Everybody was equal. Everybody had the same rights. So when you run up on something bad, do away with it. So let's do away with that uh, school and that church that uh, conducted the Tuskegee experiment. Well, that's about it from down here in uh, Notasauga, real town. Uh, the other little town that we went through, I don't remember what it was. We're headed on to Auburn. I'm not going to do anything about Auburn. One other thing I do want to tell you about Notasauga is uh, in Creek Indian, I'm having to look at my notes right here right quick is what I'm doing. In Creek Indian, it was not a soggy. And not a soggy in Creek Indian language means many teeth. And that gets back to my theory about the giants from Atlantis passing through this land. And I'll talk a little bit more about that whenever we get back to the studio in just a little bit. Alrighty, so we made it on back into the shack this afternoon and uh, we're gonna try to close this video on out in just a little bit. 
but I do have a couple other things that I want to bring up and uh, get your opinion on and uh, a little bit of stuff to bring out in open some of my thoughts ideas on uh, uh, Giants and why are we gonna be talking about Giants well in Notasaga as I said a while uh, a few minutes ago Notasaga in Creek Indian uh, or so I read on the internet means many teeth now where did they come up with that many teeth uh, if you have looked at any of the giant videos or done any research on giants, giants usually have two rows of teeth. And is that what they were referencing when they named Notasaga? Was there a group of giants down there or did a group of giants pass through? I just wonder if there's some Indian mounds in that particular area that there might be some giants buried in. And uh, there have been giant bones uh, dug up here in Alabama in some of the uh, Indian mounds. Or so I have read uh, on the on the internet in some old uh, uh, newspaper articles. There have been many of them uh, dug up out west. There's several uh, newspaper articles that I've seen on some videos to where it uh, mentioned that giant bones were actually excavated from these Indian mounds, and that's what I would like to see this Indian mound where I live here uh, excavated to see if there are giant bones in it, or just what may be in there. And if you think you might want to do that while well, of course we would like to have uh, a university or a college to actually do it but uh, there would be other ways for private people to do that if you would get in contact with me I would uh, certainly tell you how to go about those uh, channels or pathways or whatever you want to call it or you might be able to get down there and excavate this mound but anyway uh, something that I thought about while I was putting this video together what if there are giant bones in this mound what if there is actually a UFO in this mound? Because this mound is a circular mound, and when you get off from it to where you can see it good, it actually takes the shape of some type of, of some types of UFOs that I have uh, investigated and been told of. That that would be a uh, very interesting find if there was actually a UFO buried in this mound, and you never know what may be in these mounds. But uh, anyway, getting back to the history I was talking about being done away with. There's been a lot of history done away with in this country, especially the Indian history and pre-Indian history of the giants whenever they were here. Now, uh, where did these giants come from that uh, lived here in this country at one time? Because, they, as I said, they have found bones and evidence that they were here. I believe the giants came from Atlantis, and I believe that there was a group of leaders or elite group of people in the, well, all people in Atlantis were elite, I guess, but the higher elite, or whatever you want to call it, probably had an idea that Atlantis was fixing to be uh, d destroyed or destroy itself or be destroyed by some outside force, whatever it was. And I believe that they recorded a lot of their secrets and uh, that type of stuff and had it to where they could actually carry it out on boats or whatever they needed to do to carry this to other lands, to other countries so all of their technology would not be lost and that's very possibly what happened here in America. I believe they came into like the Gulf of Mexico and settled in uh, uh, Mexico, uh, southern uh, United States because the oldest Indian mound that uh, is supposed to be recorded is in, I uh, can't think of the name of the town, but it's in uh, 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 Louisiana. And then as the mounds come further uh, northward toward Canada, then uh, the ones that are in the south are supposed to be the oldest according to what few have been excavated the ones that hadn't actually been destroyed and that's what is such a terrible thing that history like that was destroyed and as is going on now it does not need to be destroyed but anyway I'll try to get off of the uh, history part but uh, something I've always wondered about uh, uh, the Indian mounds is over in uh, Malville which is close to uh, Tuscaloosa the University of Alabama is there are several Indian mounds of all shapes and sizes over there. And if you have ever done any uh, research on uh, the pyramids, they say that the pyramids are in the same pattern as the belt of Orion. Now what I'm wondering is Malville, the mounds over there, do they coincide with some uh, uh, star constellation or some group of stars up in heaven? Is that where they may think they come from? Is that where the people in uh, that built the pyramids, is that why they built them in this particular fashion? Did they think they came from the belt of Orion or whatever? The reason that I'm adding that in is the uh, Casita Indians that live cl close to where I live in uh, Casita, 
Alabama is now what it's called, which is along I-85. If uh, I don't know the uh, U uh, GPS uh, coordinates on it, but anyway, you could probably find it. I'll try to give you as much information there as I can. Casita, Alabama is located in Chambers County along I-85. And the reason I bring the Casita Indians up is I have read on the internet and in uh, a book or two that I have that they actually think that their ancestors came here from the sun. So, you know, it, they are the only uh, Indian tribe, I believe, in Alabama that believe they they are, are originated or their origins, whatever you want to call it, and their ancestors actually came to this planet from the sun, which is uh, very uh, unusual according to what I read. All right, and I may be jumping from uh, one topic back to another, but that's just kind of the way my mind works sometimes whenever I'm trying to decipher some type of problem. But let's go back over to Manville just for a moment and uh, many other Indian mounds. But a lot of them at Manville are pretty tall mounds, but they have a flat top. Would that be a good landing uh, place for a UFO? And also, uh, I, I, I think it kind of would. And also, uh, now going back to the Casito Indians who believe they came from the sun. If you remember uh, Eric Von Daniken who uh, wrote uh, the book Chariot of the Gods, I believe back, either back in the 1960s or 70s and I remember reading that and uh, he raised a lot of questions in my mind with some of the things that he brought out in the book. Uh, he did say that many uh, native uh, cultures here in America and not only here in America but throughout the world as well, many uh, civilizations and everything uh, claimed that they that their ancestors actually came from the stars. And uh, that even uh, is a uh, Bible uh, uh, reference, I, I would say, uh, that uh, whenever, uh, if you do go by the Bible or you believe in the Bible or whatever, if you do, uh, then God, whenever he created uh, earth and everything, he was from the stars, he was in heaven. And uh, so it, it all, Almost every civilization believed that they came from the stars, so there's got to be something to it or all of these legends and stories would not be almost identical. Anyway, it's just something to think about because uh, as you have probably seen on some other videos, uh, according to uh, newspaper articles and that type of stuff, especially out west, that when these giant bones have been found in mounds that the Smithsonian comes and confiscates these and uh, then they're never heard of again which is very similar to what happened to Indiana Jones and uh, Miriam in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. They went, to, they took them the whole movie to find the Lost Ark, and when they finally found it, it got confiscated, and then the very last scene in that movie, it was being placed in some gigantic warehouse along with a lot of other uh, artifacts and that type of stuff that uh, are said not to exist. And you may be sitting out there thinking, well, now, how can you come up with a, a theory like this that that's where the giants came from Atlantis, how can you prove that? Well, how can you disprove it? If you can disprove it, okay. Okay, so now it has been one hot day here in uh, Alabama, and uh, I'm going to bring this video on to a close, even though it was a little controversial subject, but I do want to do some more history, and I will try to leave my opinions out as what should be destroyed and what shouldn't be destroyed. I don't think any of it should be destroyed. I think uh, the past should be left alone because there is absolutely nothing you can do to change the past. You can change the future, but you cannot change the past. But anyway, as I always do, I'd like to say hello to my granddaughter Madison. I also want to tell you that the Alabama Bigfoot Society is run completely out of pocket. And if you're in a position to where you can and where you would like to make a donation to the Alabama Bigfoot Society, that would be very much appreciated. If you like this video, give us a like. If you don't like this video, give us a like. If you like what we're doing or what we're trying to do down here, ask you to subscribe to the channel and i guess with all that being said once again that i'll see you next time on the next alabama adventure and i will see you on down the road the space between every two trees is like a doorway a doorway waiting for you for another adventure here in alabama